Welcome back to Tech Forge, folks. I'm your host, Nath, and today we'll be looking at overclocking a GTX 970 Phantom Edition. This particular card is not really designed for overclocking given the small heatsink as well as the very low power limit in the BIOS. So, we'll be looking to overcome those two factors. The video will be spread over two parts, so make sure you stay tuned for that second part. If you've clicked on part one of the video first, congratulations to you, gold star. This particular part of the video will be looking at the thermals and the performance stock, what sort of headroom we've got, we'll be running a few tests like that, and then looking to rectify any problems that we see. Part a deux of the video will be covering some BIOS modification, I'm foreseeing some of that, and also the overclocking section and the results that that brings. So get comfy, don't go anywhere, and we're about to hit you in the eyeballs. So before we get started on any sort of modding or overclocking, we need to get a baseline read on temps and card dynamics, so that means running a stress test, in this case running Unigen Valley at stock clocks. This will give us an idea of what sort of thermal headroom we have for overclocking, as well as indicate any limits that Boost 2.0 is putting on the GPU. We'll be leaving all settings at default and allowing max power target, that will give us the best idea of what sort of wiggle room this Phantom has in the design. The fan curve is the same used in the previous video and it's set to a manageable noise level. I wouldn't really go too much higher with that. Uh, as for settings, Unigen Valley is running 1440p res. Uh, we'll be increasing the uh, details to, uh, let's go up to high to stress the GPU and we'll raise the MSAA to four times to really sort of hit the memory in the guts as well. Now we're going to run that for 15 minutes and just see where the data takes us. Okay, run is complete, and going over the reading from Afterburner shows us that we uh, hit the ADC thermal limiter and stayed there for quite a while, with the boost clocks bouncing around between 1354 and 1380 megahertz once the card started thermal throttling to keep itself in that envelope that's specified in the GPU. Looking at power limit data, it seems like we're bumping up against the power limiter as well, sitting above 100% at all times and uh, hitting a power limited state quite often as well. So the GPU is just going to try to keep itself within these parameters and it will affect the clocks to keep itself under the power target, under the thermal target as well, you know, or both, as it's doing in this case. Now that we know that in its current state the card is both power and thermally limited, it's time to get our baseline score for performance using Unigen Superposition 1080p high settings so we can track our overclocking results against the base later on down the track. Here is that result. 5, 6, 7, 3 points and a peak temp of 78 degrees Celsius. We can see the clocks are a little more stable on this run because it doesn't have time to reach full thermal saturation. We only see a very minor dip at the end as temps get close to throttle point, down to 1367 megahertz on the core, with 1380 being far more common in the run. So with all the baseline runs out of the way, we've got to do something about the thermals and the power, so let's start with the thermals. We're going to start by doing a bit of a repaste and adding a fan just to see if that can help us with the thermals. We're going to replace the thermal paste with either some ectotherm or some Thermal Grizzly, which is fairly standard, uh, usual paste to use, not going liquid metal on this one. We also have our screwdriver kit, we've got some alcohol wipes to take care of the dirty thermal paste, and some zip ties to hook the fan up on top of the cooler, like so, to help blow some air through, because fans aren't very good at pulling air, they're much better at pushing air. This little slimline fan isn't a high performer, it's just a three pin DC fan, but should do the job. So let's cue the music and get this thing started.
At this juncture, I'd like to point out I'll be using the EK Waterblocks approved method of GPU paste coverage, which is just an X from one corner to the other on the GPU, and then just some small dots in between each portion of the X to give uh, some nice even coverage on the GPU though. Now the cooler's back on. It was a remarkably simple cooler to take off and put back on. Uh, only held on by the four screws for the heat sink itself. Since the heat sink and the shroud form the same unit, there's no shroud screws to undo on the back plate, which uh, threw me for a six at the start. I, I was looking for these screws that were just going to you know, jump out and give me a hassle. But no, it was really quite simple. Uh, really well designed, actually, by Gainwood. Uh, now it's just time to sort of ghetto mod this uh, fan onto the heatsink itself so we can push a bit more air through. Um, with a bit of luck this will help uh, lower some temperatures, getting some airflow through. By placing it over the spot where we have, we sort of that's where the, the VRMs and also the memory chips uh, are situated. So having more airflow over the memory chips is going to allow us to overclock some memory a little bit, which is always great. Um, yeah, it's not much else to go over. Once this is done, we'll pop it in the machine and uh, see how we go. So the card now ready for testing. It's back in the box behind me. It's just now a case of seeing how far we can push it with the modifications we've made, if we can push it at all. Of course, that'll be covered in part two of this video. Stay tuned for that. If you're not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button and the little bell beside it so it will notify you when part two does go live. So for now, I've got to get on out of here. I've got a lot of testing to do, and I'll make this next video for you guys for those eyeballs. I really shouldn't leave the ear holes out, should I? For your ear holes, too. Thanks for watching.